All right, thank you so much. Uh, I'd love to unpack this concept of design for life, and I'm going to do it very quickly, but in order to, uh, in order to do this right, I, I need to tell you just a little bit about my company so you have some background. I'm going to go very fast, so stick with me, and I love to use photographs. So check this out. She's correct. I'm 18. I thought it'd be funny to make the world's biggest beanbag. Turns out I filled it with foam instead. People loved it. I started selling them one by one. Eventually, we need a factory. Eventually, we open our own stores. They kind of spread all over the United States selling just those sacks. And then we invent this really cool couch called Sactionals I'm going to tell you more about in a minute that has caused us to pivot to become actually a direct-to-consumer model, disruptor of the furniture category, with nothing in our stores, no more rugs, lamps, bowls, baskets, nothing but these really cool couches, and of course, the original love sack. We currently operate roughly 70 locations across the U.S. that actually just support our e-com business as a place to go in, kick the tires, and see this thing that you might have caught a video of, hopefully, and blown your mind once you understand what it is. So the sacks made us famous. <laughs> and gave us our name, or at least famous in our own minds, and the Sactionals have now taken over the business and really are a, the case study for this concept that I'm most uh, passionate about sharing with you today. So our purpose statement, to bring total comfort to millions of homes, runs a little bit deeper than just, you know, comfortable stuff. The idea of total comfort is this idea of the peace of mind that comes to you when you just don't have to worry about your furniture because it can grow and evolve and change with you and frankly, you can have it for the rest of your life, which has given rise to our big, hairy, audacious goal to save at least four million couches from the landfill, frankly, by selling at least a million of ours. So it's supported by this philosophy called Design for Life, which I'm going to unpack. It's really the crux of my remarks today. But uh, before I get into the weeds on that, I'd like to, before I talk about what it is, I'd like to just explain why I think it's important. And it's because this is, this is BS, right? This is, uh, this is our e-waste, all right? So we laud companies, of course, like Apple, who are innovative and amazing and have built the most valuable company on the planet, but of course, kind of force us to discard these devices every couple of years because they are not built for life. They're designed, I believe, for death. Ultimately, there is this planned obsolescence that drives our society forward. And, and unfortunately, you know, we don't want this stuff buried in our own land in America. So we ship it off to places like Ghana, where they, bless their hearts, dig through it and recycle in their own way the gold and the silver and the, and the uh, aluminum and silica and all the elements that are trapped inside these devices. But of course, unbeknownst to them, typically they're exposed to all kinds of terrible uh, terrible things like lead and mercury and arsenic, and, and it's just not a, a, a great situation. Fashion is no better. We're all in this hamster wheel where one day we find out that our lapel's too wide, our lapel's too skinny, our jeans are too tight, now they're too loose, and we've set this in motion ourselves as humankind, and in fact, today we wear five times, or at least burn through five times the amount of clothing that we did growing up in the 80s. Uh, furniture, of course, is, is its own culprit, filling one-third of our landfills, if you can believe that, right? Blew my mind. So welcome to the new economy, where the millennials are going to save us all. And in fact, they will. 40% of these millennials, roughly, are, claim they're willing to do the research in sustainability efforts and making their purchase decisions, which is, which is pretty cool, right? But as I look at the landscape of sustainable products, it drives me nuts that often sustainable products are all become synonymous with, you know, some kind of compromise. It's neat that we're making stuff out of recycled magazines and paper and who knows what, but why must it be synonymous with something a little less good? So shouldn't true sustainability really sustain? That's my question, right? If three quarters of us uh, would be willing to pay for extra sustainable offerings, if, if it were actually there, shouldn't these more expensive objects, in fact, provide higher utility, not less. And so this is really what gave rise to the, to the crux of Design for Life, which comes down to two very simple design criteria. Couldn't things be built to last a lifetime, to provide true sustainability? Couldn't things be designed to evolve? So as my life changes, my taste changes, my taste change, things could change with me. So this is 
the philosophy, and it boils down to those two high design criteria, but it's expanded into, an, into uh, a framework that's much larger, built on the shoulders of what I believe are some of the best works of all time, back to the 70s, Victor Papank, uh, the upcycle, of course, William McDonough, extremely influential book, the tome that is natural capitalism. Many of these required reading, by the way, in my own organization, and finally, of course, uh, our very own conscious capitalism, which has also become required reading at Love Sack. And so the framework is, is, is a little more complex than just those two. The, the, these eight points roll up into these two design criteria. And uh, just a quick spin through, again, products guaranteeable for life, right, is, 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 is the requirement. Reconfigurable, so it's, it's not just the thing you bought but could become many things. Maintainable, right? It, 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 it pains me that I can't just replace the battery on my iPhone and make no mistake, that's no accident. Changeable aesthetics. Because by the way, aesthetics do matter. You know, that's again, one of these compromises that so many sustainable products seem to make. Um, sustainable inputs and operations this is a tough one, right? This is one that we're still trying to live up to in my own organization. And this year I'm very proud that we've swapped out all of our upholstery fabric on the sectionals to be 100% made of 100% recycled plastic bottles. And this year we'll, we'll repurpose more than 11 million plastic bottles put into fabric that could, list in, could last in your home for decades. And uh, it's just one example of what we're doing. Thank you. Um, and by the way, uh, you know, upgradable. So this thing that you bought can continue to evolve with you. Lovable, it must be designed not to be trendy, not to be the cutting edge, but to be endearing for a long time and, of course, end of lifeable. And so, without going too deep, this is all a backlash against the concept of planned obsolescence, which most of us live with and, in fact, are driven by with many of our life rhythms, but didn't know that it actually was just a reaction to the Great Depression. It was an intentional strategy put into motion. GE, could you please make refrigerators that didn't last so long. So people might need to buy a new one in three or five years, right? And by the 1950s, it was just an accepted international business practice to drive economic growth. And you know, my favorite reaction to this is William McDonough's opening of his book, The Upcycle. We don't have a pollution problem. We have a design problem. If things were only designed better from the beginning with a super high bar, perhaps many of our problems that we've created for ourselves could be mitigated. So let me give you, let me make it real for you now. The case study that, you know, is my own product called the Sactionals, so you can understand what this might look like. So if, if this were your Sactionals couch, which by the way are 80% of Love Sack sales today, okay, just to, so you understand. If this were your Sactionals couch, you could take these same pieces that you bought, someday rearrange them, lock them back together, change the covers even, and achieve a completely new look out of the same pieces. Leather, fabric, whatever you want. Wash it in a washing machine. Come back, you know, have a midlife crisis, move to a downtown loft, change the covers again, make something weird like that, come back in four years and say, oh my gosh, I finally have more space. Add some pieces in. Whatever you need to fit your style or whatever you can dream up, you can do it with just these two pieces. You buy a bunch of seats, you buy a bunch of sides, and you can build 10,000 couches. We have patents all over, it's a very unique approach. But more importantly, it's not just flexible, it's extremely flexible. This couch will shrink by six inches just by rotating a piece. That one will grow by a foot by rotating them the other way. Split into multiple pieces, send some pieces off with your kids to college, get a divorce, split it down the middle evenly. <laughs> Whatever your life changes, this will work. Including, by the way, just your own taste in fabric or color or whatever. And then the whole thing, of course, packs up inside of itself to become the most sustainably shipped couch furniture solution on the planet. Thank you. Thank you. So we're excited about this product, but we're more excited about what it represents in the world because this is the designed for life <laughs> case study, right? Because we've all lived with it. And these are real practical solutions that just make life easier. And it's the result of living up to an extremely high bar for design. And of course, it's 
comfortable. And as we innovate and continue to innovate, this thing will charge your phone. This thing will pack technology inside of it. Hidden, beautiful, out of sight, recliners, etc., will all be reverse compatible to just go with the pieces you already bought maybe five years ago. Making those pieces you invested in, not purchased, you invested in more valuable than even the day you bought it. So we have this tiny, tiny sliver of the couch category. It's a $17 billion annual category. Sadly, I think I make the best one, right? Very proud of the product, but if, if, if we're, you know, at $100 million last year, if we're so small, then where's the proof that this actually resonates with consumers? So we're, we're still coming up, we're not a huge company, but we, it has propelled us to become, at one point, the fastest growing furniture company in the US. But let me make it more tangible for you from maybe an anecdotal standpoint, because this is what I believe is coming. As I look at my own competitors, these are businesses, right, that produce couches that look just like mine, uh, price very similar to mine. As I look at hashtag Pottery Barn Crate and Barrel on Instagram, these are not their photos, these are consumer photos. I'm blown away, in fact, in awe at what they do better than me. Their design is beautiful, rugs, lamps, accessories, season after season. I can't keep up with that. But what's missing from these photos? Humans, it's weird, right? I and mean, when I do see them, they're there. They're really beautiful humans. They're great looking, right? Like my own children aren't dressed that well on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> but it's cool to see their brands reflected back to them. So then I contrast that from screenshots of the exact same day, the same moment, the first six photos on Lovesack's hashtag, Insta hashtag Lovesack on Instagram. And this is what I saw. The next page down, this is what I saw. And it's categorically different. It is categorically different, the results that come from living with a design for life product where you just don't have to worry about anything because that is total comfort. So let me wrap up with three quick predictions and I'm done. Prediction one, I believe, I hope that our design for life products will propel us to become the fastest growing and most beloved furniture brand on the planet. We'll see, we'll see if I'm right, helping us achieve our big, hairy, audacious goal. Prediction two, I believe that other entrepreneurs and designers who pursue this approach will disrupt their own respective categories similarly because it's such a high design bar. We know what the Design for Life couch looks like, but wouldn't it be cool to see the Tesla not only download software at night while you're sleeping, but stretch to a truck on the weekend when you need to go to Home Depot? <laughs> or you know, you're sick of red, shock it, and it becomes silver. By the way, had the design bar be set that high, it might just do that. The dishwasher, the computer, the phone, who knows what could come. So please, what I'm asking is to rip me off, right? This is an open source platform. The blog is there, the platform is there. I, I would like to see others uh, succeed using it. Finally, last prediction, and I'm, I'm done. Someday, I believe consumers will choose to invest in these type of products, maybe because we've convince them to do so, instead of spending on throwaway items to enjoy greater sustainability and utility. So please, as consumers yourself, what I'm asking you to do is just buy less stuff, but buy better. Thank you, keep in touch, please. <laughs>